Hello friends and welcome back to my garage. Today we're going to simply be replacing my bar tape. As you can see it's pretty worn out. I think we're at around 2,000 kilometers on the bike and it's definitely seen better days. So I have some new bar tape bought off Amazon. This was not sent to me or anything like that. I think it was around $15. I'll put it up on the screen. It says you can recycle it and it's made in China. What I thought was interesting about it, first of all, it's pretty um, loud, so to speak. As you can see it's got some kind of party colors and it's cork. I've never used a uh, cork bar tape and I've certainly never used these type of colors. I usually just like going with black. So this is something new for me. It says it's uh, 2150 millimeters long. <laughs> that means 2.1 one meters, I guess, and, and 2.5 millimeters thick. I didn't actually notice that before purchasing it because I know some of them are like three millimeters thick and I would have liked to gone with something a little bit thicker, but it's gonna have to do because I already have it. Oh, and the width is 30 millimeters. So 2.5 millimeters thick, 30 millimeters in width, and 2,150 millimeters long. Okay. I'll kind of make this a how-to, although I'm sure there's literally hundreds of how to change your bar tape videos out on the web, but uh, we'll throw another one onto the pile. So the first thing you'll usually want to do is roll up your uh, hood covers like that, just to get them out of the way. Now the next thing you may want to do is go ahead and take the end caps off of your handlebars. Sometimes it'll look like this, just a plain one that's kind of pressed in there. But in this case, we actually have one of these ones with the uh, hex key. I've never actually used this kind before. I didn't put this on. This came like this when I bought the bike. You can see how it works here. As you tighten it, it pulls this little uh, threaded piece that direction, that direction, and then that's going to make this wider and that's going to lock it in. Seems like a better system than this kind that you just press in. Now I don't really have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and take off my quad lock mount just to kind of make it a little bit easier to get it out of the way. I see I also have a zip tie here. I'm not sure even why I put that there. I assume it was me. Okay, now we can go ahead and start taking off this bar tape finally. Now if it's done in a traditional way, which I'll talk about a little bit more about that uh, later, then um, you'll want to start up at the top. And if it's backwards taped, you might want to start at the bottom, I think. But this one's traditional, so I'm going to start at the top. And usually if it's done in a traditional way, it's going to have this lock-on tape at the top. So you have to take that off first. Now the fun part, you can just simply start unwinding the old tape. Some, some tapes have this sticky component to them. Uh, most of them I would say do, but uh, some of them don't. The sticky component here, you can see it right there. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to apply the, uh, the bar tape but sometimes it'll get stuck onto the aluminum and that's a hassle to get off big time. This one's got the adhesive backing, but it doesn't seem to be sticking onto the metal, which is nice. Now there's also gonna be possibly, depending on your setup, some brake lines, shifter uh, cable, cables also. And uh, those are taped into place usually with a separate yeah, here. Those are usually taped in place with a separate piece of tape. And uh, in this case, I think we can just leave it alone. Actually, I take that back. We can't leave it alone. We could, but I'm not. Um, because I set this up to a one by. So this left hand shifter here has a, has a cable that goes nowhere. And I want to get rid of that at this point in time. So anyway, like I said, this is the fun part. You just go ahead and unravel it. It is possible sometimes to reuse bar tape, 
Oh, see, now this is, oh no, that's, that's okay, excuse me. It is possible to reuse bar tape, I've done it before. Obviously in this case, we're not gonna reuse it. Uh, see, now it's actually, the backing uh, tape is actually sticking to the bar, unfortunately, right here, which is not really good. Makes it hard to get off. If you can get it even like that with, the, with your finger to get it all coming off at once, that's a lot easier than trying to pick it off after the fact. Okay, we're doing good now. Okay, now that I have all my tape off, this is an opportunity that I can do a few things easily, such as adjust my hoods. If I wanna bring them up, in, whatever I wanna do, I can do that now that there's no tape on. And the other thing you might wanna do is look for any damage on the handlebars. I've heard, never seen it myself, but I've heard that when people sweat a lot, they can actually, it can actually weaken the bars to the point where they can break. I think that might be more like on an indoor trainer, but yeah, it doesn't hurt to take a look and make sure there's no like corrosion. Uh, these ones are painted, so they're probably more resistant to that, but like the old school ones, they would just be bare aluminum, probably are more susceptible to that. Anyway, I think I'm gonna leave my hoods as they are. I think I liked the way they were, so I'm gonna leave that alone. The only thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this extra housing because I converted it to a one by and don't need it. I wonder if I can sneak it out without messing with the tape that's here. Let's see if we can just pull this. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, the cable's still there, I can see it. Okay. Whoops. Whoops. Not totally sure on this um, system how that cable comes out. I think just to get this out of here, I'm gonna cut that. And I'll try to get the cable out in a minute. But then I can just get the housing out pretty easily. Just pulling the housing out right there. Okay. And I'll just kind of squeeze this tape in a little bit. I think that'll be okay. Just like that. Now I need to get this cable out of here too. I've never actually dealt with this exact type of... Uh, Shifter, this is a Claris eight speed, but so I'm trying to get this uh, shifter cable out and I can see if I push it pretty hard, there's like this slot. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through there. Whoops. And it looks like that slot is made for this purpose. Of course, there's like a barb on the end of this cable and I can see it right down there, I think. You know, guys, I'm not figuring out how to get this out of here. I'm sure it's really simple if you know the trick but I don't know the trick and uh, I don't really have time to fool with it. So I'm gonna cut this really short and just call it a day. Let me know in the comments down below if you happen to know the trick on how to get this out or if I'm making it possibly hard by cutting the cable even or if it's gonna rattle, that would be the worst. Kinda doubt it. Okay, there it is, now it's in there. So I think we can forget about that now. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you know how to get that out properly, if it's not too hard. I don't know if it's a simple trick or if I need to take something apart. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Okay, now we're at the stage where we're going to put the new tape on and we have a choice to make. We can do traditional style wrapping, which means you actually wrap it from the bottom up to here, and then you need to put some tape on, which Bar, bar tape always comes with to secure the end. Or you can do it backwards way where you start here, you wrap over that initial starting point to lock it in, and then you wrap it down the bar like that. It's a little bit neater in the sense that you don't have to have tape up top, and I've been doing that a lot lately. Um, but the downside is, is the assumption is that you move your hand this way down the handlebar more often than that way. And when you start at the bottom, it makes kind of a, a shingle effect where one is on top of the other like that. And so it seems a little bit nicer when you start down here and do it the traditional way. Lately, I've been doing a backwards way and it's been totally fine. I haven't had it like wear out prematurely or anything like that, but I haven't put thousands of kilometers on them either. And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna go traditional today because you might've seen me do backwards quite a few times lately. Uh, so today I'm gonna go traditional. Don't know why, don't even know why. So here's our bar tape. It actually also came with its own uh, end cap. 
I'm not going to use that one. It's just this, uh, this kind of plastic jam in one, which I, I guess isn't as nice. I could use the original, which was this one, which is actually pretty nice. It's also all plastic, except for the bolt. But I'm actually going to use this because as I said in my last video, the Timu company sent me a bunch of stuff and they wanted me to show the stuff on video. That's what I agreed to. So today we're going to use this one, which is kind of nicer maybe because this part's all metal. This part's still plastic though. Um, so we're going to try it anyway. Um, yeah, here's your bar tape. Usually it does come in some kind of wrapping like just like this one does. So I'm going to Go ahead and take that off. I would say doing traditional way is a little bit harder uh, because you need to handle the end here um, more uh, carefully so it doesn't unravel itself. You can't really lock it in in the same way, at least as far as I know. And there's also a choice to be made. Do you want to go from inside out when you wrap it? Oops, sorry about that. Do you want to go from inside out when you wrap it? And I think that's what I usually do. Or do you want to go from outside in. I don't think it really matters. What it's going to matter is when you get to the top. The only difference it's going to make is when you get to the top, is it going to be that direction or that direction? I actually never really thought about it too much and I always have gone uh, like this, I believe, outside in. So that's what I'm going to do again today. There we go. Move to the bike to try to improve the lighting a little bit. All right, here we go. So uh, this one also has that same backing tape built in. So you need to peel off this, this cover for it as you go along. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna start like this. Uh, and you wanna leave quite a bit overhung, overhanging from the end of the bar so that it can be tucked into there. That's the way it works. That's gonna be the case whether you do it traditional or backwards. So I'm gonna hang over probably it's hard to say, it's hard to say exactly, but you can see the back of it. I'm just gonna do like this. It's uh, bar taping, I think is a bit of an art and uh, I'm not the best at it. I never would claim that, but I've done probably at least a dozen, if not more. So I feel pretty confident this is gonna turn out decent. You wanna cover over the previous piece of tape by one third, at least that's what I've always heard and done. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but so it's looking like that. And uh, you know, if you don't get it exactly right, honestly, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. And you can see here how much here is overhanging the end of the bar. That You can imagine that's how it's gonna go tucking into the bar itself. So that looks pretty good. Even the bottom, which has the least, still has a good mm, more than a quarter inch. Getting, getting started is kind of the hardest part on this. So now that we got it started, it's not so bad. And you got to keep tension on it. That's the other thing I should mention. Once you start, you always want to tension. You don't want to let it get loose suddenly. So I'm always just kind of pulling on it and using my other finger to create a, a pressure on the tape. This tape doesn't feel like the time, kind that you want to pull super hard, maybe because it's cork, but some of it, you really almost got to stretch. This one I, I think is not so much the case. Although it is foam on the bottom, so it seems to be like a cork foam hybrid, I guess. I don't know. I've never used cork before, so this is new for me. And uh, as far as the one third overhang, it's kind of comes into play, um, not so much functionally, I think, but more aesthetically. If you have one that's like this big and then one that's that big, it might kind of look funny. So you just try to do your best and it won't be perfect, but uh, once you once you get it on there, it'll look fine and nobody will notice and you won't even care probably At least that's been the case for me. I've always been happy with the results Then you just keep working your way up and once you start getting into the curve section like I am now It starts getting a little bit more tricky and you might want to start putting more pressure on uh, pulling the tape harder at this point and really pay attention to how it's laying down now if you do make a mistake which I often do, usually do, I'll say, you can always go back. You can, you know, go back and unravel it and start again, not all the way again usually, but just back to where it doesn't look good. So it gets kind of tricky now because your overlap is gonna be smaller in the inside of the curve and bigger, uh, less overlap on the outside. And that's okay, that's really just the way it's gonna to have to be. 
So maybe I'm getting only a quarter or less on the outside there and I'm getting like over 50% on the inside. And it's okay. Now, once you get up to your hoods, this is another little tricky part. Um, as you can imagine, you're kind of like, well, what the heck do I do now, right? And this is where I make a mistake a lot of times and have to go back. Um, but basically, I'll tr try to kind of show you how to do it, if I can get it right even. So I happen to come up to a pretty good time uh, spot on this one where the, the top of the tape is pretty much hitting the gap here with the hoods. So now I'm going to, I can't go here anymore, you know, that's full. So I have to, I go all the way around back. I'm pulling it pretty tight. I'm gonna pull it pretty tight. I'm gonna go up over the hoods, okay? And this part's a little bit tricky. I'm coming around as usual. I can't go down here because it's already full. So I'm gonna go up on top and I can't just keep going now because there's a part on this side that's missing still at the bottom. So I'm gonna come across the bottom like that. And now I'm gonna go around the back and now I'm at the right angle to keep going again. And it's okay if you do a bit more overlap at this section because the geometries are kind of weird. And I have all this extra cabling going on, so. But it's okay, because most of this is gonna be covered by the hood. Okay, it's a little bit funky. And if you're not sure if it's gonna be covered by the hood, you can always uh, as you're working on it, like I am, I'm just going to pinch it. I'm going to bring my hood down just to see that it's going to clear and cover most of that funkiness. Oh yeah, that's totally good. Yeah. All right. Awesome. That covers a lot. I'm just going to pull this back out. Okay. All right. I don't even need to cover quite as good as I did probably, but there we go. All right. Now we're back, back in the game and just keep going. Now you're gonna have another pretty tight curve here to handle. So the outside's gonna have less overlap and the inside's gonna have more. So I'm only gonna do maybe a quarter overlap. And then on the inside, I'm doing like half of it overlapped. And then on the outside, again, only maybe a quarter overlapped. I'm trying to keep it nice and snug as I go. Hopefully I don't run out of tape. That would be a bummer. <laughs> I have ran out once and I had to like go back and rewrap it to make it not so tight, not so close together. But I don't, that's only happened once. It was like a really short bar tape. Okay, this is going good. I think this is gonna be fine. And now I'm gonna start. Wow, I think I'm gonna only have just enough tape. They did not give us a lot of extra on this one. Yeah, wow. Yeah, just enough, okay. That's cool. I think that's cool. I almost would like it to come a little further. And I probably could do that because I, I did it pretty darn tight around here. So let's see if we can get it just like a, a few millimeters further. So I'm gonna unwrap it a little bit, just up to the curve. And I'm gonna try to not do so much overlapping right here. And I'm gonna be more aggressive with the angle up through here. And you also gotta make sure you're doing an angle on the bottom side. I'm pulling it pretty tight. All right, that's gonna have to do. That's a little further, I think. I think that looks pretty good. All right, now this is where your end tape comes into play. That should come with your kit. And uh, you can remove the backing from that. I'm just gonna throw it on the ground for now. Okay, now you can, I guess, put this either way, but I kinda like to, um, I guess, do it like this. So it's like, I don't want the seam to be on the top. And of course I wanna cover there and cover here. Sometimes you need to cut the end of your bar tape to make it straight, but I can feel with my finger, it's not that far. So I'm pretty sure if I do this just like this, it's gonna cover everything just fine. 
So I'm laying it down on the bottom right now. It covered everything on that side. I'm keeping it pretty, you know, a little bit of tension on that tape too. And uh, now I'm gonna wrap it around and make sure not to wrap it around that cable, of course. And I'm giving it, like I said, quite a bit of tension all the way around. Okay, I did end up with a little seam right here, but it's not too bad. That doesn't look too bad, I think. And it covers the edge so it shouldn't come unraveled or pick up or anything like that. I have in the past used uh, electrical tape and put like a whole bunch of it because I was scared it was going to uh, come off. But I think, I think we're good today. If we're not good, I can always go back and do it again. So sometimes they come, the kits come with a little square here because sometimes your hood cover doesn't reach that point. Um, this one didn't come with that, surprisingly. You could cut a piece at the ends if you had enough, which I don't. So I'm just gonna hope this covers most of that triangle. In this case, it does. It totally covers it. it actually looks pretty good. Okay, I think that turned out really nice. Now we just need to do the end cap. Okay, like I said, I have to honor my agreement with Simu. They sent me a bunch of parts, so I need to make my video of their parts. So this is their end cap they sent me. And basically all of them work the same in the sense that you fold in your bar tape into the tube of the handlebar. This always seems kind of like a faff to me, if I can steal, I think a English term, British term, um, seems right in this, this moment. Uh, but basically, yeah, you stick it all in there as much as you can. Sometimes it's like the edge, you're kind of wondering, is that going to be good enough? And then you stick your end cap in like that. Now, some of them you're hammering in because they're just kind of a press fit. This one's a little different. So I'm really having to be careful to keep all that tape in and under the cap. Okay, I like how big this cap is. It really covers any imperfections. And then I assume I'm just going to tighten this down and it should lock it in. I've had in the past where these kind of start to fray, um, unfortunately. I'm keeping pressure with my fingers here just to make sure it stays down while I tighten it. I can feel the pressure. There we go, increasing. Now I'm not sure exactly how tight to make it. You definitely don't want to break it. Uh, the expansion piece is plastic, so I think I'll just do a little more. I'm just going to call it there because that's, that's not going to come out. It looks pretty cool too, I must say. There we go. So we did one side. That's how you wrap bar tape. Now we got this crazy party colored cork. I don't know if I like it or not. It's almost like too crazy and loud for me, but you know, whatever. It'll probably grow on me. And uh, the only thing I'm kind of worried about is that it will get dirty because it's not black or well, black will get dirty too, but it'll look dirtier. That's probably going to happen. I'm guessing this isn't going to last as long as my usual ones, but I do got to say, even though it's only 2.5 millimeter, it's pretty padded. <laughs> Maybe that's just compared to my old one, which was totally worn out. feels nice. feels really nice and it looks cool. It's definitely a unique look on an otherwise pretty much all black bike. So let me go ahead and wrap the other one and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, all finished and I think it came out really good and I think I like the style. At least it's something different. Let me get you a closer look. So I hope you found this video useful or helpful and leave a comment if you did. And leave a comment if I did it all wrong. I know uh, bar tape is a touchy subject in the cycling world. No, but seriously, let me know if, uh, if I could do something better if I'm doing something a little bit wrong. Uh, as I've said before, I'm not a professional. I'm obviously just a garage mechanic here. So uh, anyway, I guess I've rambled on enough about it. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.